Hi, I'm Carlene Rhodes, and I'm the president of the St. Paul Foundation. Fighting racism has been a priority of ours for a long time, and we're pleased that Naomi Tutu is here in town right now to talk with us about fighting racism um, on the occasion of our fourth Ambassador Award ceremony. <laughs> Hi, Naomi. Hi. We're so glad you're here to talk with us. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You know, just a, a real basic starting question. Why is it important for us to keep talking about racism? Because I, I think that it is because racism is one of those things that permeates our lives, that it impacts every aspect of our lives. Racism impacts our access to health, to education, uh, socioeconomic, to justice in our justice system. Racism is one of those things that everybody has a role in in our country, in our communities. And therefore, I think that everyone needs to have a role in ending racism. Great. Where are we now, 2010? Is it better? Is it worse? Are we on a track that we're going to dismantle racism anytime soon? I think that we are on a track to dismantle. I'm not sure about anytime soon. I think we are on a track to dismantle. I don't know, can we say better or worse? I think that in some ways it's, it's much better. I mean, looking from the 60s, um, uh, the, the civil rights era from Jim Crow, we're much better than we were then. Um, are, we, are we worse in some ways in 2010 than we were maybe 15 years ago? I think in some ways, yes. I think that there has become, there has been a tolerance of, of racist, statements and actions that that has grown in 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 the last few years i think um are we better yes we are better we have the first african-american president in the united states mm -hmm. are we worse yes we are worse in what we hear in people's criticism and some of the 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 jokes and comments that are made um, on the internet and and even on in, in some of the mainstream media mm -hmm. so it, we are in in some ways in a both and situation and um, what I what I believe is that even the situation we are in now is an opportunity that as we are hearing more racist um, conversation mm -hmm. that actually that is the time when we are offered the chance to have those honest conversations about race and racism. Mm -hmm. And I know you agree with us in trying to find a, a way to have that conversation in a safe space so I can I can try things out, I can test things, I can be corrected if I'm if I've said things that are offensive without knowing it. So we, yeah. we share your commitment to creating that safe the place safe to be spaces. vulnerable. And I think that it's that is a, a a critical thing is to have those safe spaces so that when people say things or experience statements from others as being hurtful, racist, or angry, that they are able to say that without fear of, of being rejected mm -hmm. or, or labeled permanently mm -hmm. as racist or angry. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, you know, that, that is why the work that the foundation is involved in is so important. Your bio says that you're a human rights advocate. Would you tell me what that means to you? How, how much broader is that than what we've been talking about? You know, I call myself a human rights advocate mo mostly coming out of my experience in South Africa. And it's because when we were growing up and were part of the struggle against apartheid, um, we were always told that our struggle against apartheid was not simply a struggle against apartheid. It was part of a larger struggle around the world for a just world. Mm -hmm. And so I see my, my struggle as continuing, mm -hmm. as continuing when um, Aung San Suu Kyi is still in house arrest in Burma and the Burmese people are not able to have free elections. That's my struggle, mm -hmm. that um, the people of Tibet that the Dalai Lama is, still has to live in exile. That's my struggle. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I call myself a human rights advocate, that it is a larger struggle, it, and it comes out of a belief that we can have a just world. Mm -hmm. so. I think we can too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you see as the role of nonprofit sector and foundations 
mm -hmm. maybe here in the U.S. and in South Africa, mm -hmm. to fight racism? What role can and should we be playing? Well, I mean, I think that, for instance, the role that the St. Paul Foundation is playing here in, in, in the Twin Cities and the larger uh, Minneapolis area of being, one, a place that celebrates those who are doing the work and gives them the, the wherewithal, both financial and emotional and, and spiritual support to, to continue the work. So that's one place that I think um, foundations and nonprofits can be um, active in the work. I think that they can also be active in the work in how they model in, within their own structures. Okay. That, mm -hmm. that if, you know, if you are supporting work of justice, then you need to be a community of justice yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very important role that uh, often is missed, you know, that people don't r recognize how important that is. Um, and, and finally, to be a, a voice, an advocate, um, to be, because there is a, a, a moral authority as well as the economic that comes mm -hmm. from being able to help, but that there's also a moral voice that comes from the nonprofit, the philanthropic, the, the foundations, that, you know, we are institutions that are showing that we care about our mm -hmm. communities. Therefore, our voice has, you know, there's, there, is, there is strength in the voice. Mm -hmm. And so to be advocates vocally for justice, uh, particularly in, in this instance around racism, but for justice in our world. You know, it's pretty clear you grew up in an interesting home mm -hmm. with um, an interesting father leading um, so many people down these paths. What's your relationship like with him now, and when do you turn to him? I, I, I turn to him probably, probably more now that I'm older than I did growing up. I turn to both my parents. Um, I turn to them uh, some, some of the basic things about raising children, um, um, but also in, in, for me, finding my path has been a, a, a continuing struggle. What is it that I really feel called to be in the world? and having conversations with my parents about you know, who I want to be and, and how do I reach that um, you know, has been something that has been really important, particularly in the last 10 years or so. I'm just going to ask you one big final question. You, you lead the Truth and Reconciliation workshops. Mm -hmm. what, can you just tell us what you're hoping you're going to accomplish with those, and, and what are you discovering as you um, work with groups willing to face some of the tough you know, mm -hmm. well, parts I, of their you know, history? The, the, the idea <clears throat> for the Truth and Reconciliation workshops does come out of the South African experience, where uh, our TRC m made people tell the truth about their part in maintaining or fighting against apartheid. May, and we heard the truth of the stories of both those who were victims and survivors and heroes of the struggle, but also those who were perpetrators of human rights abuses. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw that as a powerful tool f for healing, mm -hmm. that if we can get people in conflict, communities in conflict, institutions in conflict, to reflect on their own actions, that, you know, what is it that I have done that has perpetuated this conflict or has perpetuated this injustice? What is it that I have done that has tried to bring an end to this? What has been my role as an individual or as an institution in, in the, larger, the larger story that is going on? That when, when we reflect on our history, our role, then our options for moving forward become so much clearer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I have found that people, when they have faced their history and faced their responsibility, culpability, or whatever, are actually released to move forward, empowered mm -hmm. to make positive changes in their communities. Well, thank you for inspiring me afresh in, in the work we're doing, and I look forward to your lecture this evening. Thank you.